Hi there, what is up? Welcome to The Web Schools, the best place for you to learn to code. If you're new here, please support this channel by subscribing and liking this video. Today, we are going to speak about CSS modules in React. Before we type any code, why do we need CSS modules in the first place? When we work with a React application, we normally create separate CSS files for each component. Now, the problem here is that this seems to be scoped to the component, but it's actually not, which means that if we have elements with the same class names on other components, we are going to start having some conflicts. So let me show you one example. Let's say I decide to create a new component to include some filters at the bottom of this page. I don't know why someone would include filters at the bottom of a page, but this is just for the sake of this example. So I'm going to create this new component and inside this component, I use the class called filters. So I'm going to start styling this component. So let's adjust the font a bit and let's add a background color. Now, when we go back there and refresh the page, there it is. We just broke another part of the page that was working just fine. This happened because I had already used the class called filters for that component at the top. So in a real life situation, this would cause a lot of extra work, but this is not the biggest problem because maybe we wouldn't even notice that we broke something else at first. So we would go live with this only to realize a few days or weeks later that we had something broken in production and no one wants that to happen. Hey, John, John, this is serious. We just introduced the bug live. I don't know, two weeks ago. Yeah, I know, it's terrible. So a first solution would be to try to create unique class names yourself. But not only your code is going to get very ugly, but this is also going to decrease your productivity. So luckily, React has something out of the box that you can use for this case. And this is called CSS modules. So let's go to Visual Studio Code so we learn how to use CSS module in our projects. The first thing we need to do here is change the name of the file. So let's rename the file to footerfilters.module.scss. So this is the first thing. The second thing we need to do here is instead of just importing the footer filters, we are going to import an object. You can name this object any way you want. You can name it, for example, classes, or you can name it styles. This is your choice, but it is normal to see it being called as classes. So import classes from footerfilters.scss. And once we do this, we are going to have the styles inside this file scoped for this component, which means that these classes are not going to be available for other components. Now, one thing we need to change here is that instead of using the classes directly like this, we need to pass the curly braces. And then we always need to call the classes from this object. So this is going to be classes dot filters. So a bit of a manual work to add these classes dot before the name of the classes. The syntax is not exactly clean, but at least this is going to fix that problem. Now, before we save this, let's just adjust the file name here as well. So this is now footerfilters.module.scss. We save this, we go back there, and as you can see, now we fix the problem. We are not applying that style here. Now the styles we wrote are scoped to this component only, which is really cool. Now, if you wanna know how this works, if you go to the inspector, so as you can see, React is applying a unique class. So it is automatically changing the class name to make sure there's no repetition between components. If we close the console, let's just increase here so we can see the style. Now we select the P and as you can see, it adjusted the CSS as well. So it is creating this unique class that is applied to both the HTML and the CSS. And this is what ensures that 
there will be no conflicts with class names. Now that you learned more about CSS modules and why they are important, let me give you some useful tips and rules you must follow if you work with CSS modules. So here, let's remember that we need to import this object from the module file. And remember that we can name this anything. We could name this styles and then we would use styles right here. It's really up to you. Just be consistent. You're not going to use styles in one file and classes in another one. Try to use the same name throughout your project. That would be the first tip. Now let's speak about classes with dashes. So if we go back to the CSS file, let's say we want to add a specific class to this P element. So we are going to call it main text. So this is a class that has a name with dashes. And if we go back to the file, we need to add this class. So we need to use class name, then the curly braces. And right here we would call classes dot main text. Now, if we save this and we go back there, we can see that now we just broke the page. We are not seeing anything. And this is because this right here is a JavaScript object and we can't use dashes for the names of the properties. So in this case, there are two things we can do. Either we use camel case. So we could add like this main text. We go to the CSS file and right here, we also use main text. If we save this now and we go back there, as you can see, we are able to use it like this. But if you don't want to rename your classes, maybe you use dashes a lot for class names like I do. So if you want to use it, you can still do. All you have to do is the following. Instead of using the dot notation, you can use braces like this. So this is another notation to access a property of an object. And this way we are actually able to use dashes. We just need to pass it as a string like this. And if we save this now and go back there, as you can see, this is still working. So if you have a lot of classes with dashes and you want to use them with CSS modules, you can just do it like this. Now, the next tip is about using multiple classes. And many people hate this because this syntax is already more verbose than the regular CSS syntax. We have to use the curly braces and call the classes object and then the name of the class. This is already a bit more work than we would do otherwise. But if we have to use multiple classes, this is going to get even dirtier. So in this case, we can't use comma to separate values. This is not going to be accepted. So if we have multiple classes, we have to do something else. So let me just add another class right here. So in this case, this style is going to apply to a P element that has a class of main text and also a class of first. How do we reflect that on the template? We are going to have to use the back ticks. So back tick right here, back tick closing everything. And these classes are going to be dynamic values inside the back tick. So we do this with dollar sign and we pass them inside curly braces. So now we are able to bring this from the classes object and you just have to repeat this. So you add a space inside here and then you add it another time. This time we don't have dashes, so we can just do classes dot first. And this is how we add multiple classes using CSS modules. I don't like this much. This looks very dirty, but this is the way we have to do it. So if we save this now and we go back there, we can see that we still have the styles. Now the next tip is similar to what we have here, but instead of just bringing different classes, what if we want dynamic classes? So for example, let's go to where we are using this component, which is in the home view and let's create a prop. We can name this prop is first. Let's give it a dynamic value. In this case, let's set it to true. Now inside this component, we are going to pass this as a prop. So curly braces here, let's pass the is first prop. And if we want this class to be dependent on the value of this prop, 
This is going to be super simple because now that we have these classes being declared separately like this inside the dollar sign curly braces, we can just make that test. So we could test if is first is set to true. If it is, we are going to apply this class called first. If not, we are just not going to apply anything. So we can save this. We can go back to the page. And as you can see, this is being applied normally. But if we go back there and we change this to false. Now we go back to the page and now we don't have those styles being applied because we are not applying that class of first. So that was all for today. I hope this video was useful to you. Please subscribe to the web schools if you want to see more tutorials like this. I'm Ivan Gomez and I hope to see you next time.